Red Menace. We're a comedy news podcast bringing you the latest and greatest stories from inside. My name's Chris Bolson. And I'm Alison Hall. Um, so, pretty exciting development in my life. Um, okay. Yet, yesterday, I was hanging out with my good friend, Emma, and um, she and I typically watch Riverdale together. Sure, um, sure. But that one has been uh, summarily postponed due to the Roni. Oh, what um, a shame. I, what a shame, really, that such great content you, isn't being produced Alice, regularly. I'm genuinely quite upset about this. Um, the, <laughs> <laughs> so we've been trying to come up with Ooh, the... I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I can relate, Chris. <laughs> so we've been trying to come up with a Riverdale substitute. Um, sure, and to we, fill that void. Yeah, and we've landed on Pretty Little Liars because it kind of seems like a proto-Riverdale from the before times. Um, right. When did that first come out? Sorry. Well, I'm going to save that till the end because I want right. you to give me a guess based on the information I give you. Okay. Um, right. So here's the what Pretty Little Liars is about. It's about f- okay four um, young women who are in sexy hot women. I assume in high school. Um, right. But they're sexy hot women playing high schoolers. I would assume. Uh, seems that way. Yes. Um, they okay. they are like in a, a they used to be in a clique but a year ago the girl who was the head of their clique whose name I forget the popular girl went missing and now they're <gasps> all suspicious and someone's sending them threatening text messages and that's like what it's about um, and one of the girls is the liar I don't know I've only watched two episodes but okay, well. I'll say firstly it's extremely watchable secondly. <laughs> The lead romantic subplot thus far is, so one of the girls is like, she went away for a year and has just come back. It's like how Gossip Girl starts. Um, Okay. And she, before going to school, pops into a bar, as 16-year-olds are wont to do. Um, Oh, of course, of course. It's extremely realistic. And she runs into an attractive young man in this bar. Um, and she, they have a little bit of a, a chat, a little bit of a flirt, and then they sure. very sensually make out in one of the bathrooms, like full on, mm, um, I mean, I, whatever floats your like boat, really. full on but straddle up on the sink kind of. I mean, in, in the coronavirus times, I feel like no one's making out in bathrooms. You have to swab them first, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't seem very safe. No, but, so she, um, she pashes this, um, good looking young man and then she goes she snogs him snogs him real good and then she goes to school and what he's her english teacher oh dear chris who thunk it and so no i then immediately react and go "Uh uh-oh that's not good for anyone involved but most especially not him um and (laughs) what's really Uh, yeah that's a statutory something (laughs) yeah Um, and what's right. super interesting about this is the show doesn't really seem aware of that. The show's just like... Like, oh, this is a funny, awkward moment. No, 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 no. The show's like, oh, this is a tragic romance. Like, oh, dear. it plays it deadly straight. Um, right, so it's not played for comedy. No, no, no. It's played for drama because, like, they want to be together, but they know they probably shouldn't. But, like, within an episode, they're pashing again. Mm. Now I, okay, right, I see. Based, <laughs> based on this information, when do you think this show first released? Based purely on that, I would say the early 2000s. <laughs> the pilot of Pretty Little Liars aired in 2010. Oh, that's a little bit a little bit late. It's a little bit late. And a little li- bit late for the teacher romance Pretty li- uh, plots. Pretty Little Liars did not uh, conclude until 2017. Um, and that, that plot was continuing? That plot was apparently, was according to Emma, who has watched it, is the main romantic plot of the entire show. Uh, I'm going to, that's going to be a yikes for me, <laughs> It's going to be a big old yikes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, the whole teacher and student romance trope, for, for me, that is kind of the epitome of like the early 2000s culture, yeah. you know. Well, every teen like, drama that... Had, right. had one like the had OC, a, I don't think the OC had one, but like you know Dawson's Creek had one, all the other ones that I forget had one. But it's all, it was also like a surprisingly common trope in music and stuff as well. <laughs> cool. Which is like okay, I've been re-listening to a lot of the well, I, don't, I say re-listening as if I ever stopped listening. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, to a lot of the crap I like from the early two thousands, that kind of like pop. I'm really worried one scene. day you're gonna be like Chris, who's Beyonce? 
And it's going to be a really <laughs> awkward conversation. <laughs> I know who Beyonce is. But I, like... You know, I have this automated playlist on YouTube, basically, because I usually use YouTube music because I just listen on my computer and then close that, minimise that tab so it's in the background. Uh, but recently the, the band Busted popped back onto my radar, which is like, I, I guess, like a boy band, kind of like an edgy alternative boy band totally, from like the totally. early 2000s. And like the, the the big song that they put out was about teacher student romance. I oh, love that it's so hot. Uh, from two thousand and two, the song uh, "What I Go to School For." Oh, I hate it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> from the name alone and the the concept we were just talking about, what do you think the the character goes to school? I think for? he goes to school to fuck. That's just essentially essentially. Look, I'm going to read to you the first verse of this. Because I, I think it kind of fits in well with the motif that you've just raised. Right, I'm there just getting in, uh, ready to be lies. getting ready to be traumatized. <clears throat> Please continue. I'm not going to sing it because we're not going to subject the audience to that. But I will read it. God, that'd be I'll, funny. I'll read though. it straight. It would as be, if... Alison. It would be very funny though. <sighs> it would, it would be very funny. But I think it would also be funny if I just read it straight, as if this is like some kind of, uh, you know, tragic poetry or something like that. Porque no los dos. Sure. No singing. You can, li- you can listen it. in your own time. Before before you start, if you don't want to hear my dramatic reading, go ahead and just stop this and go listen to Busted What I Go to School For. Stream that. Give them some hits, you know. All right, well, give me this dramatic reading. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Her voice echoes in my mind. I count the days till she is mine. I can't tell my friends because they will laugh. I love a member of the staff. <laughs> And I fight my way to the front of class to get the best view of her ass. Nice. I drop a pencil on the floor. She bends down and shows me more. Oh, I d- oh, um, I, okay. And now, in the music video for that, what, what in fact happens is he throws the pencil onto the floor mischievously. <laughs> he just throws a pencil at her. <laughs> and she bends down to pick it up for him. Uh, and, of course, because she's a sexy hot teacher, she's wearing a sexy hot low-cut but top. But little does he know that she's going to bend down using her knees and her posture is not going to change right. in any she's substantial way. Right, she's going to have way. great, great bending tactics, you know. She's, <laughs> she's got trained in OH&S, you know. She's not going to bend down. No, but in the video she does bend down. She doesn't demonstrate good OH&S tactics. <sighs> and, in fact, her breasts are exposed to him. They just flop right out, don't they? <laughs> they just flop right out. Uh, now, I'm going to read a little bit more of this lyrics for you. That's the first verse. Uh, this is 2002 culture. Yep. That's what I go to school for, even though it is a real bore. You can call me crazy, but I know that she craves me. <sighs> That's what I go to school for, even though it's a real bore. Girlfriends, I've had plenty, none like Miss Mackenzie. That's what I go to school for. Alison, some of these rhymes are really hurting me deep inside. Well, this is... Uh, <coughs> now, now, this is where it gets really weird, Chris. Oh, this is where it gets weird. Okay. This is where it gets weird. <clears throat> she may be 33, but that doesn't bother me. Jesus age. Her, her boyfriend's working out of town. I find a reason to go round. Uh-oh, I don't like where this is going. I climb a tree outside her home Very to bad. make sure that she's alone. No. I can see her... In her underwear, I can't help but stop and stare. And then I fucking shoot her in the head because I'm a serial killer. <laughs> right. Uh, and then it goes back to the chorus and then we come back to another verse. Everyone that you teach all day knows that you're looking at me in a different way. I guess that's, that's why that's my grounds, marks are so high. That's grounds for firing someone, just an FYI. I can see those telltale signs telling me I was on your mind. I could see you wanted more when you told me that I'm what you go to school for. I'm what you go to school for. You know what? I think music's gotten better. Uh, I think, I think, yeah. I think 2002's cancelled, yeah, I'd like I'm to not, say. Yeah, I'm not into it. So this is uh, the year after 9-11. And I'm not saying that... <laughs> what a fucking reference point there, Alison. What a wild thing I'm you not, just said. I'm not saying that uh, 9-11 ruined culture forever. Oh, my God. No, but... No, this guy look, ruined culture. And you just ruined guy. the episode of the podcast. <laughs> now, this isn't the only song that 
Bastard wrote in like 2002, which is like lusting over assorted workers that he encounters in his day to day life. Uh, we've got the song Air Hostess, uh, which, what, give, give a little guess what you think Air Hostess is about. Um, I think it's about a dock worker, because that's the twist. Yeah, it's about a sexy hot air hostess that he checks out while she's serving him food on the plane. I feel like this man's never had sex. That's just uh, my. The, the other, there's another song here, <laughs> "Crashed away. the Wedding," which is also popular by them, which is about uh, a sexy hot bride who he checks out at her wedding. That one is impressively rude. That's just, <laughs> like the lack of tact in that one is especially uh... impressive. <laughs> Yeah, look, see, this is the, I'm going to read the chorus for this and then we'll finish this little interlude into music culture. Okay. He says, I'm glad I crashed the wedding. It's better than regretting. I could have been a loser kid who ran away and hid. But it's the best thing I ever did because true love lasts forever and now we're back together. As if he never met her. So looking back, I'm glad I crashed the wedding. I am going to write a pretty cool new song and it's going to be about yeah. how... All my friends keep telling me that they're functional adults, but really they're just little basic losers, little bitches <laughs> who don't know anything about what being a real man is. Now, because, because as I said, you know, the Busted came about and wrote that song after, after a very tragic event. We're, we're going through a tragic <laughs> event right now, Chris. <laughs> So what I think is we need to you like bring back idiot. I just can't in, with in, you, <laughs> Chris. In twenty in twenty twenty one, we're bringing back two thousand and two music culture, the year after a tragic <sighs> event, and I'm going to write a song about me in hospital. Right, I'm in hospital with coronavirus, and it's going to be about, about a sexy hot coronavirus doctor who comes over and like she leans down to like give me the coronavirus drip or whatever and then i see her boobs but and it's we, like we Whoa, live in a, chris <laughs> we live in wow we <laughs> we live in a different time now Alison. we're like cuz you've got to have <laughs> you've got to have an attention grabbing headline so i think it needs to be a bit more like it, the song needs to just be called doctor boobs otherwise like no one's going to listen to it <laughs> doctor yeah exactly and her name and is it, doctor boobs it's a Dr. wild boobs, coincidence exactly Exactly. So Dr. Boobs... Uh... <laughs> I love this new character of Dr. Boobs. I think Dr. Boobs actually wears, like, deliberately very oversized frumpy jumpers because she just knows that, like, people... Oh, yeah. She didn't ask to be named this, you know? No, she didn't. That's just what she was born she with. She was born That's... with. And she decided yeah. to go into a career of medicine. Um... Yeah. Her, her first name's actually coincidentally Doctor as well. <laughs> so her full name is Dr. Dr. Boobs. Dr. Dr. Uh... Boobs. And she d- she really didn't like that. And her because middle, it's kind her of middle, presumptuous. her middle name is heaving. It's unfortunate, <laughs> unfortunate for her. <laughs> it's really not great for her, no. Uh, but look, we'll bring back that genre of music. I think it's really something that our culture's really <laughs> missing. Can we Chris, call our new band Doctor Boobs. <laughs> I'd like that a lot. Uh, the first album is also called Dr. Boobs. Well, yeah, it's just a self-titled, self-titled debut, you know, Dr. Because Boobs. everyone knows, everyone knows Stacey's mom, but no one knows Fountains of Wayne, you know. Yeah. Everyone's going to know Dr. Boobs, and we want and them to know lead, Dr. Boobs as well. Our lead single is also going to be called Dr. Boobs. <laughs> Got that big Run the Jewels energy. Just to, yeah, exactly. We're not going to be a one-hit wonder. Because everyone's going to remember the band, the word, the song, Dr. Boobs, I suppose. It's going to be, go down People are going to get really excited about our second single, which is going to be called Air Hostess Boobs. Um, <laughs> it's just, and what we do, basically, is we just take Busted's Air Hostess. Yeah. And then we, uh, we just add the word boobs in it a few more times just to make, because I feel like we're living in a time where we can't be subtle. You have to be explicit yeah, 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 and say, yeah. look, yeah, I'm checking out her boobs. Um, and then the, the third single, and this is like the, the last big hit, um, is Woman at the Counter at the Aquarium Ass. <laughs> Every single song is just a woman in various places of the world. And various pl- various different career professions, in fact. Uh, it, it's just all about checking them out. Um, That's a good culture, <laughs> I think. And uh, our second album, it's always really hard with that second album because, like, you don't want to have the sophomore slump. So you're like, we've got to turn it up. So sure. our second album is called Principal Pussy. 
Um, but unfortunately, people didn't like that as much, and they were like, oh, no. I think it's too far. I think it's kind of gnarly. It, and but, you know, the misogyny line has been crossed. <laughs> I think the misogyny <laughs> line was crossed at the very first concert. No, no, no. It's just like fun, charming, larrikin misogyny up so to at, that at the point. start, people think, okay, I don't know if this is ironic or if this is like real. <laughs> And, you know, it's like that's the line that we're kind of blurring there so that people think, yeah. okay, you know, like let's give the – this is 2021. This isn't 2001. You can't get away with that. But maybe it's ironic. But then Principal so, Pussy comes out and they're just like, oh, I think maybe that's – oh, I think they're into uh, deep I in think the it's bit. Not, I think it's not ironic anymore. Yeah. It's like Lana think, Del Rey. <laughs> <laughs> Coming way back around to, to that – do you have stories, by the way? I do. Do you want to talk about the news? Let's. Um, Instead of talking about music from 2001, I, I'll make a podcast that's just exploring the lyrics of popular songs from the early 2000s. Um, this is a song. Uh, I went to say this is a song. Um, this is a story that my, my papa, my dad, sent me from the Port Macquarie News. Um, oh, wonderful. Mid North Coast man charged after offering to pay for food with weed. <laughs> I mean, that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> a 31-year-old Rainbow Flat man was issued a court attendance notice on Friday, May 15th, after his bizarre behaviour in a fast food outlet led to police searching him and finding four grams of cannabis in his possession. Ooh. Four grams. At around 10pm. The man attended a fast food outlet in Tari, which is so on brand. Where uh, Tari, yeah, I've been to Tari. Uh, I've never been to Tari, but I knew a kid in high school named Rowan who came from Tari, and he was a charmer. Um, did he have four grams of weed on him at any? Nobody did have time? an infamously large penis, and I never knew how everyone knew about uh, it, but it was a known fact. That Rowan what was happens hung. if it wasn't true? That would be unfortunate for him. It's like the Pete Davison situation where now that it's such a public thing, anytime anyone sees his um, genitals, they're going to be like, oh, okay, I thought. Oh, okay, like it's the, actually quite small. Like the hype maybe has... This is why you've got to go in blind, you know? Right, exactly. So, like, the or you set up the other hype, right? So then they think, like, oh, it's actually quite it's big. Actually, so you just feel like, now I, I need to warn you in advance, I do have a micro penis. And then when the pants come off, they're like, oh, okay. Not that yeah, bad. It's, it's like, it's actually not that small. This looks functional. <laughs> just like, yeah, exactly. I think that's the best way to do it. So <laughs> men out there, if you want to take some advice from me, just do it. Just like... Manage, <laughs> manage expectations. <laughs> right, exactly. Set the, set the bar low so then you can easily cross the bar. At around 10pm, the man attended a fast food outlet in Tari, where staff noticed his behaviour was similar to a person under the influence of some kind of substance. Mm, that's very specific. After... Yeah, you could just anyone who's acting slightly weirdly, you'd be like, well. I, I feel like you could probably look at me at most times and think I'm acting similar to someone who's under a substance. Well, yeah, when you first told me you were straight edged, I was like, are you sure? I think you've been on, co <laughs> you, I think you've been on cocaine sure? this entire time. This, the entire time I've. Maybe, maybe that's true, though. Maybe there's just cocaine in my walls. Oh, So that okay. I breathe it in at all times of day. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need, like, to snort lines because you've got passive cocaine. Right, exactly. The cocaine is actually the what is rendering my ceiling as cocaine. I think that we need to start offering a service to wealthy people where we kind of create sauna rooms, but instead of being water vapour, it's just like dust of cocaine. <laughs> okay, Chris. <laughs> Can we go back to the story? I think we've got to go... What's... <laughs> um, after ordering his meal, the man allegedly said to the staff, how do you want me to pay? With the cash or with the weed? <laughs> <laughs> and the staff are like, oh, maybe the weed, actually. He then allegedly placed cash and cannabis on the counter, paid for his meal with cash, and left the <laughs> store. <laughs> <laughs> the man was located a short time... Oh, boy. <laughs> ...was located a short time <laughs> later by police in what appeared to be an intoxicated state. He was searched and found... Four grams of cannabis was allegedly found in his possession. He is due to appear at Tari local court on Tuesday, August 5th. That's pretty baller, I think, as a, a tactic for buying stuff. But I want to see, <laughs> like, it seems on brand for a McDonald's, but I want to see where you could push it. Like, 
could I go... Well, who, where, which kind of shops would actually accept that? Like, could I go to, like, a kitchenware store and be like, sure. I don't have money, but I do have this just wet blunt, you know? Like, what... It would depend on the kind of vibe mm, of the place. Secondhand sure. store or, like, video rental store? Definitely. Oh, video rental store, you could 100% pay with that. Anywhere staffed by, like, really bored teens. <laughs> <laughs> you know that shop? I don't know if it's like I, actually. Shit, I take it's back. called like Rainbow's Connection, and it's like oh, yeah. a weird hippie store. You could absolutely pay with weed there. I think here's my, they would accept here's that my, as a currency. Here's my thing: is if they were like, if it was 2002 and these were like millennial teens, I'd be like, yeah, totally. But I don't know what these is. Do Zuma kids still smoke weed? Is that still cool? I don't uh, know. They probably do jewel hits on their veins. That's my. I feel like. Weed is probably kind of like blasé. It's kind of. It's probably kind because it's becoming more legal. <laughs> it's a bit. You know? It's, it's kind a kind of a bit gauche, honestly. You know, the, the media is not out there talking about how weed's going to give you cancer anymore. Now they People, just... They're out there talking about the dangers of vapes. So the kids are hitting their vapes big time. Yeah, and the vapes. What do they have in them? I genuinely don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have not done I the. Know. I haven't done right. the research. I mean, there were in Indonesia. There were a lot of like vape bars for people to sit in there and vape. And look, that's some part of the culture that I think I just really didn't feel it's connected with. An aesthetic that is bad. The biggest culture shock I had in Indonesia was the vape bars the vape on every street. Yeah, it's like oh, the vape, the vape normality. You know, <laughs> they're normalizing vapes in this culture. <laughs> Now, there's a few different stories that I've got here to choose from. Do we want to get into some content that will make us, like, a little bit angry or some content that's really wholesome? Um, I'm getting a wanting-to-be-angry vibe from you, so let's go with that one, I think. I got some feelings I need to work through, and this is a good place to do it. <laughs> well, I'm reading from Time, time.com, in fact. Uh, Whoa, fancy. I know, Chris. We're getting a little bit out of our league here. But this is from earlier this month, this story. It's actually from the 6th of May. So, but it's just crossed my radar. And look, it's really the um, the headline. Okay. That I <laughs> this 66-year-old woman is suing all gay people. Yes, <sighs> all of them. <laughs> all right. Uh, I am so, interested. Are you aware that you're part of an ongoing court case, Chris? Um, I I wish someone had told me before now. Um, yeah. It's kind of irritating to me that I'm just learning about this. I feel like there right, should have been a letter you, sent out or something. Exactly. A letter sent out to say you are part of this ongoing court case, so you have the opportunity to present your defence if you would like. Um, I don't have a defence per se because I don't know what I'm being accused of yet, but I will I will provide one at the end, I promise. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, I'm giving you the chance now to be able to look at this and say, okay, sure. Uh, look, <laughs> this is bizarre. A Nebraska woman is suing every gay person on earth and asking a federal judge to rule on whether homosexuality is a sin. Uh, now, I don't think that's what judges rule on right off the bat. <laughs> I don't think they're about sins as crimes is different. Uh, I would also like, I'd, I'd like to posit from my point of view as a very good Catholic gal, Chris, yes, as you yes, know, yes, yes, like, yes. I'm a great Catholic person. Uh, I, I don't think it's the judge's jurisdiction, is it? I'm pretty sure that <laughs> it's the Pope's jurisdiction. And last time I checked, this current For Pope... For Catholics. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this current Pope is into it. So, like... Yeah, I, I don't I know. can't remember, but I, I recall Chris. someone telling me that the current Pope was pretty chill. I mean, for, by Pope standards. He likes... <laughs> this, the current Pope likes to party. The current Pope? He's the party boy Pope. Sylvia Driscoll, 66. I wish she was three years older, to be honest. <laughs> like, I just got to throw it out I there. Feel like I wish I've... she waited three years to make this court case. I feel like I've broken you. Just by... <laughs> Exposure to 69 jokes. Uh, can I just say, on I posted a photo on Facebook the other day when I was heading out to your place. Yes. And my friend commented on it and was saying, I was going to like this, but it had the perfect number of likes and reacts. And I had a look and it was 69 likes nice. and reacts. Nice. Good friend. And then people went and ruined it well, after what is, that. Can you unfriend and those people? And then my friend... My friend didn't go ahead and like it after that. So I just think my friend didn't like the photo. <laughs> she just thought it was so, a bad photo. 
I'm calling, I'm putting you on blast, whoever <laughs> that friend that was. You know who you are. Chris, you can see who it is by looking at my Facebook wall. Okay. Uh, Sylvia Driscoll, 66, describes herself as an ambassador of God and his son. Son, Jesus Christ. Okay. I, that's a pretty cool title, honestly. It's. Yeah, I wish I was an ambassador of God and his son. I'm an ambassador. Son, Jesus Christ. I am an ambassador of my dad and his son, who is me. Um, sure. So I know that's like a smaller scale, but, you know, it but is it's, what it it's, is. it's important. It's equally important. <laughs> You've got to own your truth. <laughs> and she will serve as her own lawyer in Driscoll versus Homosexuals. And <laughs> 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 I fucking love it. I want to see this court case. Oh, yes. I want to see this. I can only assume a little bit losing her mind. I just, I, I really want the judge to say, and can the uh, opening statement from homosexuals please stand? <laughs> Who is representing homosexuals in this case? I like to think that we can all get together you and just all, shout well, as a collective. Because every homosexual is being vindicated here, I think they should all have the chance to come in and have their say, and this will be the longest court case in history. I think what we need to do is get all of gay Twitter to make a response to each of her statements and then take the first letter from each of those tweets sure. and then turn that into the response. It will be, okay, it will be, be gibberish, but it'll be pretty fly yeah, gibberish. Well, it'll be worth it. Yeah. In her seven-page petition, written entirely in cursive, oh. just school doesn't reference... <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh yeah, boy! Love oh yeah! It. Oh, there's a PDF attached. I can see the the petition itself. Oh boy, it sure is written all in cursive. <laughs> is it legible cursive or is it doctor cursive? I could read this if I if I put the effort if you in. Tried. If I focus, okay. I, you can't skim this. No, oh. but that's the it's... only way I read things nowadays. Right. So. Yeah, in her seven-page petition written entirely in cursive, Driscoll doesn't reference any case law for the U.S. District Judge, uh, Judge John M. Gerard to consider. But she does quote the Bible and Webster's Dictionary, uh, which is the <laughs> secondary scripture to the Bible, as we know, for all Obviously, Christians. Obviously, that's the Third Testament, is the dictionary. <laughs> Webster's Dictionary, yeah. The First Testament is the, like, creation stuff and Moses and all that. Second Testament, that's Jesus. All Jesus Third and all Testament, his friends. G- Webster's Dictionary. Webster's Dictionary. What a selfie is, you know, important things like that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I never thought I would see a day in which our great nation or our own great state of Nebraska would become so compliant to the complicity of some people's lewd behaviour, <clears throat> writes Driscoll, who says that homosexuality is a sin and that they know the homosexuals know it is a sin to live a life... Oh, my God. Well, yeah, that's the fun part. <laughs> I'm going to read this sentence again because I, I cannot make sense of it. That homosexuality is a sin and that they, the homosexuals, know that it is a sin to live a life of homosexuality. Why else would they have been hiding? Mm, yes, why else? It was uh, probably the killing. Why else, Sylvia? I, I, I wonder possibly well, like the, why. Like the pogroms. Like the, yeah, let's, uh, yeah. Just like the, there might be a few, a few more reasons. For like attempted genocide, that like. Yeah. Fun stuff, uh, you know. Sylvia, you know, it's uh, a, a few more um, things. Sylvia, that. maybe read a book. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and then it's just it got like a little reference to a tweet here. It says, gay activist and columnist Dan Savage, one of the many millions of people being sued, has signaled that he'd be willing to take the stand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. So if you're, if you're listening to this and you are like, you know, you're a member of the LGBT community, you're a gay, you're one of the people being sued here. You go out and take the stand. You know you're welcome to. I... You're uh, a <laughs> witness in this case, I suppose. I just really look forward to the incredibly mean things that will be said on the stand about this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly about her appearance and style. Oh, God. It's going to be It's not going to be great. Delicious. But, you know what? You know what? I'll, I'll, like, uh, I'll let them have it this time. You can insult this woman's appearance if you wish. <laughs> I'm not normally one for like insulting people's appearance, but you know, if you're suing all gay people... You're asking I for think, trouble. Uh, <laughs> I think you're asking for trouble. And you see here, she's using Webster's Dictionary as her reference, 
Everyone knows that the gays prefer Oxford English Dictionary. Obviously. That's a fact. That's a fact that has been researched Webster and you is, should not look <laughs> Webster is the dictionary of the straits. You heard it first right, here, Right, exactly. It's the, the hetero dictionary. That's why it's got the, the letters E and it's T the dictionary in it. of the breeders. Exactly, exactly. So uh, we know it's not the most reliable source. It is inherently homophobic if you reference Webster's Dictionary from now on. Yeah, totally. The the definition of selfie in the Webster's Dictionary is that thing with the photos that the gays do. So, like... (laughs) The definition of (laughs) selfie is sinful millennial activity if you open (laughs) Webster's Dictionary. (laughs) I love now this idea that Webster's Dictionary is, like, the boomer definitions of everything. Do you remember? the website conservapedia which was like a conservative wikipedia i do it was upsetting but also funny yeah uh, i feel like webster's dictionary is the conservapedia of... the definition of video games just says go outside <laughs> the definition of mobile phones says talk to them face to face you <laughs> piece of shit lazy millennial avocado waste of money avocado is negative house <laughs> Avocado is just a picture, like an emoji of a house crossed out. Funnily enough, the the thing emoji uh, doesn't even appear in the dictionary. And weirdly, um, Dire Straits, the best band. It's weird how they they, (laughs) really singled that one out. Minions, comedy gold. Minions, very good, funny, love it. (laughs) And that's all there really is to this article. I just thought it would be really important to let the people... (laughs) Bruce Springsteen, this little indie musician. No one seems to have heard of him, but I think he's pretty good. The young kids don't know him. The kids don't know <laughs> the kids, him kids don't know about days. Bruce. They don't know Brucey like we do back in my day. They don't know Brucey like we do know Busted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's a sentence was I think that? Busted is the new Bruce Springsteen. Let's continue. Uh, yeah, exactly. Look, in the future, I'm going to go to the kids and say, oh, you don't know what I go to school for by Busted? Ugh. Oh. Can you believe and it? And then the kids are going to listen to you playing them that <laughs> like, song about wanting to fuck a teacher and be like, um, this is not, okay? this is not normal. Do you, do you need some, do you need some help? Did this happen to you? <laughs> do you need therapy? I think, I think, look, I think these days in the 2020s, we, we do in fact have therapy groups that can help you. I, in 2030, we're going to have to come up with a therapy group session for people whose views on the world were damaged by Busted. <laughs> busted and all of, let's just say all of the early aughts culture yeah. and uh, sex comedies and teen, teen sex songs and all that kind of stuff. Were you damaged by 2004? So were all of us. <laughs> so, so were every single one of us. Chris, do you have a different news article, by the way? This is finished. Oh. I just wanted to let everyone know that the gays are getting sued. Um, I haven't, just in case you didn't know. Another one, this is sent to me by my dad. Um, when we were on the... I do like a family Skype um, every sure. every Sunday, although not this Sunday, because I'm going to be fucking partying. Oh, yeah. Um, but my dad was just like looking on his phone and he very excitedly looked at me and he's like, Chris, I've just found the most you story or the most your podcast story um wow. i've ever seen i don't know if that's like a compliment or an insult it depends on what the story is this is an article from the guardian um from their south korea section um, okay that's good south korean football team apologizes for using sex dolls to fill stands <laughs> oh chris's dad this is exactly the kind of content we like Crazy. okay i Look, I'm seen, I feel seen, and I feel like his assumption that we would enjoy this story is accurate. Is accurate. I, I don't feel, like, insulted by that. Thanks, Chris's dad. A professional football team in South Korea has apologised after mannequins it used as substitute fans during a match at the weekend turned out to be sex dolls. <laughs> oh, dear. The K-League FC Seoul said the dolls which had been dotted around the stands currently off limits to supporters due to the coronavirus outbreak, had been ordered inadvertently after a misunderstanding with the supplier. I, as far as I know, those dolls are not cheap. Have you ever accidentally ordered a sex doll, Alison? Yeah, every, every single day that? of my life. Like, the other day I wanted to order, you know, some char-grilled charlies for dinner, 
and accidentally I clicked order on a sex doll. Who has And it showed up at my house, and I'm like, oh, silly me, I wanted char grilled oh, charlies. God, I could go for some char grilled. I may have that for I lunch. Wanted, I wanted chicken and chips. I didn't want chick made of chips. <laughs> I don't know. That was nothing. <laughs> A check for dicks. Let's, there we let's go. Move, I, well, there you go. Let's move on. Earlier this month, the K League became the first major football league to hold matches since the start of the pandemic, with the season's opening game watched by a worldwide audience of fans starved of live football. But <laughs> FC Seoul's attempt to bring a touch of realism to Sunday's match against Gwangae uh, FC okay. backfired after social media users noticed that the mannequins looked more like sex dolls. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this on them for noticing as well. Some pointed out that several were holding posters carrying the name of the popular live streamer, BJ Shero, reportedly the physical inspiration for the doll's design, according to the Koreaboo website, um, which is... Okay. That's a website that exists. Um, yeah, well, uh, it, it tracks. <laughs> the club said it had been the victim of a mix-up, insisting it had checked with the supplier and received assurances that the dolls were not intended for sexual use. Can you- <laughs> Sorry, you see, <laughs> You go on a website to, like, order some mannequins, right? And you see something you ha- and you're like... The little mm, customer service... kind of like a... <laughs> little customer service window pops up in the corner and you're like, just to double check, these aren't dolls you fuck, right? It's like, this looks kind of like a doll that you fuck, but, like, I just wanted to confirm that it's not a doll that you fuck because I don't want to accidentally order something that's a doll that you fuck. And the person's like, oh, I guess you don't have to if you don't want to. Like, it's... I mean, when I... I mean, it's your doll. (laughs) When I ordered that SD card earlier, I did have to double check, like, is this an SD card that you fuck before I bought it? Like, you can never be You did send a message and you were like, can... Well, not can you. Is it Do designed? Is it designed for that purpose? And they and said. And the person that sends is like, I. They well, said I, it actually is, but unfortunately, your camera only takes those cards, so you got to deal so with it. So you kind of have to use this. Yeah. And then you're like, mm. Black Magic has this weird <laughs> obsession with their cameras only take fuckable SD cards. It's really sure. bizarre. <laughs> um, <laughs> photographs taken at the largely empty stadium showed about ten dolls spaced out among seats in front of life-size cardboard cutouts of the team's players. We, okay. we would like to apologise to the fans, FC Soul said in a statement on Instagram. We are deeply sorry. It added, Our intention was to do something light-hearted in these difficult times. We will think hard about what we need to do to ensure that something like this never happens again. This is... I don't see why they're being cancelled over this, because this seems great. Um, yeah. And I think they should do this more. Um, I mean, the fan, the fans liked it. It got the fans buzzing, <laughs> that's right. you know. Into it. it means the fans could enjoy the show in two different ways instead of just right, liking exactly. the soccer. They also saw and a little something, like, something. When the team fucks up and does something bad, no one's going to see it and be angry at the team because they're going to be too busy, like, squinting their eyes to look at the dolls in the background and be like, are those maybe sex dolls? I think they should start having a bit more fun with it and buy, like, some sex swings to have them sitting in in the stands. <laughs> just, like, have one, Jesus <laughs> have one of them holding up, like, a fleshlight. Just, like, really get into the whole aesthetic. Oh, no. Handcuff some of them to the seats, you know? There's a lot of good Eesh. options. Eesh. Social yeah. media users weren't convinced by the explanation. There must be a, have been a countless number of people involved in getting that approved, shipped, dressed, and seated. I mean, that's true. <laughs> Surely someone along the process. Like, okay, this is the man, like, okay, you're the man who's been given the role, old woman. Yes. You're the person who's been given the role of putting the clothes on these dolls that have arrived. <laughs> and you do kind of like, you're putting the fan gear on it and you're like, mm, You're like, these are very uh, realistic isn't, areolas. Isn't that this... strange that... Is it, is it strange that this doll has a, a hole where the hole you, should you be? You say, like, hey, you um, you talk to your colleague and you're like, you used to work at um, Best and Less, right? So, like, the mannequins there, did they have, um, like, fuck holes on them? Did they have those? <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this supposed to be? And the Best and Less person says, you know what? I never checked, so, you know, who knows? Can't say who either knows, way. Chris? Who knows, indeed. And you know what, Chris? There's really no way they could have found out. <laughs> Look, I do, I do believe that perhaps this was a conspiracy. Perhaps, like, the FC wanted to buy the dolls as a treat, but they couldn't 
you know, we couldn't well, write that off on tax. <laughs> just so a, little, pretty... a little treat because they've got a. <laughs> you want to make the most of your investments, right. and so this is exactly. multi-purpose. Right, so they're like, look, mannequins, what are we ever going to use that again for? <laughs> These dolls. These dolls will get well, a we lot get of use out a of. Lo- a lot of use, Chris, in fact. Too much use. <laughs> they for some they of have them. been overused. Um, in mm. They have had to be retired. Yeah, look, already. Do you have a story for sure. me, please, Alison? Do we want to kind of like. I guess we're nearing towards, you know, the end of this. Not really, but. We got, I reckon we got two more in the tank. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a wholesome story. Okay, and then I will counteract it with a nasty one to close us out. Okay, right. We'll just. Uh, Actually, I don't know if I have a nasty one. Let me check quickly. Right. Well, what we're gonna do? We're just gonna yeah, like, I got a good you one. know cleanse the palate here. Okay. Uh, I'm reading from ABC News in Australia, and it says Dolphin brings abundance of items for volunteers as Tin Can Bay visitors stay away during isolation. Oh, sweet. Uh, and what we've got here is a, do- a dolphin. Mm-hmm. Delivering a, a bottle on its nose to a volunteer. Oh, that's so sweet. Right. Mystique, the humpback dolphin from Tin Can Bay on Queensland Kulula Coast, has developed an unusual habit during the coronavirus pandemic while tourists have been staying home. The 29-year-old male dolphin has taken to bringing volunteers at the Barnacles Cafe and Dolphin Feeding Centre an array of items each day. (laughs) While the dolphin has often displayed giving behaviour, dolphin feeding volunteer Lynn McPherson said his activity had increased while the Dolphin Feeding Centre was closed to tourists. One male dolphin brings in objects on his rostrum or beak, and then he carefully presents them to us, (laughs) Mr McPherson. That's lovely. (laughs) What we have to do is give him a fish in return. Oh, so it's a barter system. Interesting. So he's scavenging. We haven't haven't trained him to do this, but he has trained us (laughs) to do this. He's figured out the system. (laughs) He's worked it out, Chris. He's like, look, if I give these humans this fucking piece of trash, they're going to give me that good fish. (laughs) He's like, do you want this old disposable camera from the bottom of the ocean? I would love a tuna, please. And then the humans are like, oh, uh, we, I suppose, we, you know, like, oh, it's so cute, Chris. Well, it's like, so cute. it's like when your cat brings you a dead bird and it's like, can I have a reward for this, please? I want And you're like, well, I actually, you can't prefer, speak the same language. I'd prefer it if you didn't do that, please, Mr. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> See, our cat used to bring in, like, dead baby snakes. That's impressive. Which, it is impressive, Chris, that there were dead baby snakes, but what it also implied was that there was a, a big mama snake out there whose babies had been uh, stolen. Our family's, my family's cat, um, so we live on, or we used to, I now live in a tiny apartment in Sydney, um, but I used to live on a, a property out in country New South Wales, out in the Dale, um, and mm-hmm. it's like a hundred and something acres. It's not, like, huge, but, like, it's got space. Um, our cat performed what can only be described as a rabbit ethnic cleansing upon that property. Oh, dear. It slaughtered rabbits by the, what surely must be thousands at this point. Like, there would just be... Oh, dear. You'd be like, oh, it's two o'clock. Cyan's left a disemboweled rabbit on the doorstep. Let's go and get rid of it. (laughs) And that was just, like, part of your daily ritual. That's like, it's like, yeah. It's like, okay, take the trash out. Take the rabbit Pick up out. the disemboweled rabbit. I've gotten pretty good about animal guts, thankfully in oh, large part dear. to Cyan's predilections. Hey, guys, if you have a cat, keep it inside. He's not allowed. It's funny because he's not allowed inside anymore because he's there's other cats around and he's territorial and now he pisses on everything. Um, so, uh, Okay, <laughs> look, at least this cat is killing non-native species. No, he's doing a service to the country. It's just a disservice to me. Right, and a disservice to the rabbits, I guess, as well. Because I'm sure they at, wouldn't really like. I'm that sure too much. at first he meant it as a nice gesture, but he knows that it upsets people now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so now I think he's doing he's it out of being an <laughs> now he's doing it out of spite. Absolutely, this dolphin, on the other hand, he's uh, picking up a lot of trash from around the ocean, which is good. You know, like here's what we do to solve the pollution yeah. crisis. We just make dolphins pick up the trash. We need to give dolphins part-time jobs as cleaners. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Employ them. And that's how we'll reduce the unemployment rate, is we'll be adding a lot more uh, workers but into here's, the market. Here's the problem, Alison, is you know those dolphins are going to unionise and want higher pay. Oh, they will. They will unionise big and time. And how will the business, how will the struggling business deal with that? The government? Oh, they can't handle it. It's too much. They can't, No. 
they'll have to, you know, fire all the union workers and hire some non-union SEALs. That, because SEALs wouldn't join a union. That seems ethical and good. <laughs> uh, I'm going to continue reading. Okay. He gets under it, the item, and if he drops it too far out, or we say, come on, that's not good enough, then he gets <laughs> underneath it and brings it to us. They're like, well, why don't you just fucking bring me shit on a plate then? Like, you <laughs> fucking dumbass piece of shit. Yes, why did you bring me this crappy bottle? So rude to the poor dolphin. He's just trying to do something nice. He's tired. All right, He's been exactly. up all night searching for your shit. Come on. <laughs> The items have included bottles, big bits of timber, <laughs> shells, and wood, which are brought in on his beak. We swear he has a collection waiting to bring to us, Miss McPherson said. Since we've been close to the public, he has been doing it more and more. Sometimes he will bring ten, one at a time, so he will line them up as he has to get <laughs> fish. <laughs> what a sweet boy. <laughs> He's like, look, I've got you ten things. I want ten fish. That's, I mean, that's a reasonable trade. It's like one, it's just one for one. It doesn't matter what the object is. This dolphin is a capitalist, Chris. He's a capitalist big time. He's got the, the other dolphins out there, they don't have a stash of bottles well, I mean, to share with their humans. It's a good system for him, but it's also bad in the sense of like, what if one day he brings a diamond and he still only gets one fish for that, you know? Right, exactly. He hasn't figured out human monetary value He hasn't for figured it out the concept of value. As, of as yet. soon as he figures out the concept of value, he's, oh, he's... taken over Amazon. Yeah, we're you know. screwed. <laughs> Je- you, Jeff, step away, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Get out of here, st- Jeff, dolphin friend, whose name we don't know, right. is stepping well, in. Well, Mystique. 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 I would much prefer if the world's most rich person was a dolphin named Mystique. Right, exactly. Mystique, Mystique, Mystique is the... Bezos. <laughs> Mystique is the only one of the seven dolphins part of the wild dolphin breeding program that has this habit. I think there that is maybe male. maybe because Jeff got his divorce, maybe Jeff should start trying to trying to court Mystique. Mystique seems more his speed. Yeah, absolutely. He's an entrepreneur. Exactly. There is another male, but he doesn't seem to do this. He goes with him, Mystique, to find them, and then when we have to, and then we have to give him a fish as well. This <laughs> person said. What a good fucking grift! <laughs> what a grift! He's like, okay, I know this boy. He's got a deal, right? I'm going to cling on to him. He's going to go get that shit. He's got big... I'm going to wait for him and I'm going to go along too so the humans feel like they have to give He's me something too. He's got big too. this presence from both of us energy. <laughs> He's like, look, you're giving something to him so you kind of have to give it to me now too because I'm here. And then he's just waiting. He's waiting. Um, is there more to this story? I'm just going to read the, the last little bit here. Okay. The dolphin feeding program can see as many as 200 tourists visit the centre per day during school holidays. It was closed until May 16 when restrictions were eased to allow visitors again. Mystique came to Tin Can Bay with his mum, which is in inverted commas, in 1991. (laughs) His mum? Allegedly. I feel like... Now, see, this is why I'm like... "Mm, Are you... uh, I feel like that dolphin wasn't his mum. He grifted some poor grieving mother dolphin into believing <laughs> that he was the child. Yeah, but that's the cycle See, of the life, Alison. That's how it be, you know? The, the mum dolphin just saw her baby just get, like, chomped by, a, you know, like a great white shark. Hmm. The baby just got chomped. And then bloody, you know, young Mystique, like, comes over and is like, oh, hi, I'm your son. And she's like, but my son just got, you know, just got, like... Vored whole <laughs> by that great white shark, <laughs> and then he's like, "Well, no, I'm your son." And she's like, "Oh, okay, yes, yes, this works." Yes, and then ABC News, in fact, was like, "We know this is true, but we can't add this in the story because, you know, it will get sued exactly by mystique. Exactly, he's too powerful." I'm going to read just the last little bit. He stands out. This is our mistake. Mm-hmm. He stands out because he gets raked up in fighting with other males. Mr. <laughs> McPherson said. He also had a bull shark attack in 2007 Aww. and is missing a bit of his tail and a bit of his dorsal fin. Poor boy. Poor boy. But stop picking fights with the other sharks, buddy. Well, no. How do you think he gets his produce? He takes it. He's a, a pirate. Right. All those bottles below. It, oh, this is mistake's dark, right? Yeah. The other dolphins. The other male dolphins collected those bottles. They, fucking capitalist they don't want, mystique. They don't, want money, they don't want money for them. They just have sentimental value to them. Right. Bloody mystique went in there and was like, hey, boys, give me your fucking bottles or I'll beat you up. And then 
<laughs> and then he just he's starts. Then he just starts poking them with his nose because that's how dolphins fight. Right, exactly. And then they give him the bottles, and then he takes the bottle to the humans and gets the fish, and the other dolphins starve to death, and that's how and he all says, this species goes extinct. And he says equality. <laughs> And then he says, but we've got a lot of really important equality quotas that we're meeting right. in my business, so this is fine. Exactly, exactly. Uh, do you have another story? And then he says, elect Joe Biden. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a story. And then, he, funnily enough, he gets married to Grimes. It's weird how that works. <laughs> And then he's kind of a dick about it. Um, right, exactly. <laughs> okay, this is a story sent to me by my mum. This is from 7news.com.au. Mm-hmm. Coronavirus protective equipment kits, hand sanitizer, used to smuggle meth hole. Cool. Two holes of methamphetamine. I also like that um, methamphetamine is measured in holes. Um, right, exactly. It, it, it's, that's the main measurement for it. Concealed in COVID-19 supply shipments have been intercepted by the Australian Border Force this month. Almost nice. two kilograms of the drug have been impounded. Two kilograms? It's a lot of meth. Um, that's a lot of meth. I don't know how much like meth is in a kilogram. It's like well, it's made of little rocks, so it's like a right. like a bag. There's a few rocks in there. There's a few. Think rocks. like a yeah. sandwich. Like a, like a. What I'm thinking, Chris, is I'm thinking like those big bags of rocks that you buy for your fish tank. Uh, but a, we've made it a bit smaller than that. Think like a like two sandwich bags full of meth. Is how I okay, right. I'm I'm picturing it right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, followed. Following an inspection of a package from Canada on May 6th, labelled medicine and clothing, inside was a box of face masks and bottles <laughs> of hand sanitizer, and a black vacuum-sealed bag contain- concealed in the box's false bottom. The crystal-like substance inside the bag tested positive to methamphetamine. Two days later, a second package from Canada was intercepted containing the same COVID-19 equipment. This time, the meth was concealed in hand sanitizer bottles. Um, so you can kind of just pop the top and like pour out some meth. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh dear. Um, ABF Superintendent for International Mail, Cargo Clearance and System Support, John Fleming. That's a heck of a title. Said it came. It as, sure is. Said it came as no surprise criminals were trying to use in-demand items such as masks and hand sanitizer to smuggle drugs into Australia. Criminals should. No. Criminal. Wait, I'm going to do this in what his voice surely sounds like. Criminals should know our efforts to secure our border have not stopped because of COVID-19. Oh, that's absolutely what his voice sounds like, Chris. <laughs> Good work. Sea containers are still being examined and items being sent through the mail centre or air cargo are still being screened. We are continuing to detect and stop illicit substances coming into Australia, no matter how they're being concealed. Um, mm-hmm. If someone could just send me a hand sanitizer bottle of meth, I think I could make some good money off that, and I would just appreciate that. <laughs> Which of your networks would you go to to sell that? I just tweet it. I'd be like, anyone wants some meth? Because I know the government doesn't know what Twitter is, so right, exactly. You know. Sure, the police don't know what Twitter the police is. Are they not they pay someone to do it for the them. The police only know about Facebook. They haven't caught up to Twitter yet. Actually, I'd sell it okay. on my LinkedIn. Because. <laughs> Fuck selling drugs on LinkedIn. Exactly. Um, that's all of the story. A... <laughs> but I think that's a fun way to, to wrap up is just hearing about how, how the meth is these days. Right. They're, well, it's the sign of the times, right? Yeah. You're not concealing it in uh, other things. Kids these days, they're not, like, getting book or teddy bear concealments. <laughs> they're getting, ha- they're getting <laughs> hand sanitizer meth. Hand sanitizer meth concealments. I worry that the meth would taste a bit like Aquium, and I think that would ruin it. I, I, do you eat meth? I believe there's multiple different ways you can do meth, but I believe you can you can you, smoke okay, it, you sure. can inject meth. I believe I'm not sure. Look, as a as a cool straight edge kid, as we've uh, as we've covered just previously on this podcast, as someone who only consumes drugs that are embedded in the walls of my house, in the paint, then I yeah I can't prove you wrong. All so. my knowledge of meth comes from having watched Breaking Bad, so I don't know if it's very realistic or official. Well, uh, let's just assume that it's realistic and official for the purposes of our podcast. Thank you, everybody, for listening. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram at Red Menace Cast or on Facebook at The Red Menace Podcast. You can find our sick merch at tpublic.com. You can find all six seasons of Breaking Bad on Netflix. Um, 
I am very excited to finish because I've been hungry enough that I'm lightheaded for about 15 minutes. Oh, dear. Um, Go get some food in that you. That is my plan. Thank you, everybody. I, on the other hand, had a sister who came and delivered me a soy matcha and a ham and cheese croissant. God, I can't go for that. I'm going to make... It was good. I, it was great. I'm going to make some cabinara. Um, well, enjoy your cabinara. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good luck and good night.